Get out! Your old lady smell is ruining my new house! Michaela threw disinfectant on me as I attended her housewarming. Drenched and overwhelmed by the pungent smell, I felt something snap inside me. Standing up silently, I flashed a terrifying smile at Michaela and said, Then I'll clean this up for you. After all, I built it. I went upstairs to Michaela's room to get something. My name is Harmony. I'm a 72-year-old retired confectioner. More precisely, a former patissier who ran a cake shop. I retired due to a leg injury. Now, I help my son and his wife, who have taken over the business, living a modest life. Harmony, you must be happy your son took over. At the tea parties I occasionally attend, I bring cakes made by my son and his wife, earning praise from the neighbors. Today, at the tea party, I was engrossed in fun conversations. When a neighbor mentioned my son, I stared at my tea, lost in thought. A shop with many memories, isn't it? I reminisced about the past. Indeed, my life has been full of ups and downs. I opened my patisserie at 35. After a decade of training in France, I had decided to open my own shop upon returning. My parents opposed, saying a cake shop in the countryside wouldn't work. I defied them, saying, I'll do it my way, and opened my shop. It became popular in six months, becoming the talk of the town. My French-trained skills were praised, attracting customers quickly. My once-opposed parents came to respect and fully support me. Time to think of the next new creation. Daniel, my husband, supporting our cake shop, spoke to me while preparing for the next day. Summer is tough for sales. Maybe a cold dessert would be a hit. That's what I was talking about with Daniel. That's when we heard the bell at the shop door, and I hurried to the counter. Welcome, oh. It was Michaela, my sister-in-law, who appeared. Two years older than me, she was always flamboyant. Having moved from the city, she dressed to stand out, enjoying the attention. Today, she wore an actress hat and sunglasses, not fitting for the countryside. Honestly, I disliked her. Her hurtful remarks and belittling of our cake shop were intolerable. Being a doctor at a university hospital, she flaunted her income and education. She only did this when my brother Kendrick wasn't around. I was deeply annoyed by her cowardice. As boring as ever. The decor's outdated, and it's dusty. Do you even clean? Michaela, worried her fancy clothes would get dirty, was her usual self. I couldn't hide my annoyance, responding curtly. Did you come just to say that? I just stopped by on my way to my new house. Why else would I visit such a place? While looking around, Michaela carelessly picked up a cookie and placed it roughly at the register. I can't see this shop lasting, but I'll contribute to the sales since you're Kendrick's sister. She bought a mere $7 cookie with that attitude. Who could warmly welcome such a sister-in-law? If she weren't Kendrick's wife, I'd have her out of here immediately. As I wrapped the product, grappling with these complaints in my heart, Michaela continued her tirade. Poor Kendrick, having such a failure for a sister. He said he gave up on his own shop because of you. Her words painfully struck my heart. Kendrick had generously helped finance my shop's construction. When I returned and found no support, only Kendrick stood by me. Later, I discovered the money he used was his own saved-up capital for starting a business. If you hadn't interfered, Kendrick might have had his own shop by now. Really pitiable. Then why don't you help him financially? Daniel appeared behind me and retorted sharply at Michaela, glaring at her. It's between Harmony and Kendrick and not for outsiders like us. Only Kendrick has the right to complain about Harmony. Do you even have the right to blame her? Daniel, undaunted by Michaela, confronted her. Michaela, seemingly annoyed by Daniel's audacity, 
furrowed her brows and removed her sunglasses with a puzzled look. Of course I have the right. That money was mine. You have no business interfering in this. The funds for Harmony's shop were from before Kendrick married you, right? If Kendrick has no complaints, why should you persistently blame Harmony? Harmony is my wife. Which husband would remain silent while his wife is being maligned? Daniel shielded me from showing my tears to Michaela. I felt reassured by his presence and grateful to be his wife. Michaela, apparently not amused by Daniel's words, roughly grabbed the wrapped cookies from the counter and left without another word. After she left, we put up the closed sign and Daniel embraced me. You endured well. Danny, I can't do this anymore. I don't have the confidence to get along with someone like her. Even if she's Kendrick's wife, I can't bear being treated this way. Are you not going to tell Kendrick? I can't. He's already looking after mom and dad. I can't trouble him just because I can't get along with her. Kendrick, working as a chef in a hotel, was also taking care of our parents. Despite the long commute, he managed. He had saved to open his own shop and be closer to our parents. It was with this in mind that he was saving money. Money can be earned again. I want to see you succeed as a top patissier. This money is an investment in your future. You'll definitely become famous. Kendrick assured me, investing $2 million in my startup. I was deeply grateful to Kendrick, and when he married Michaela I was overjoyed. But I never expected her to be like this. I was tormented daily by what to do. Tomorrow, we're going to Kendrick's housewarming, right? Maybe you could mention it to him? If Kendrick talks to Michaela, maybe she'll stop. Tomorrow, we're invited to the housewarming party, and I'll finally see Kendrick after such a long time. Reluctantly agreeing to the words, persuaded by Daniel, I focused on closing up the shop. Lately, I couldn't bring myself to tell Kendrick about Michaela. Kendrick's happiness, while he supported mom and dad, was precious. Despite sacrificing his own dream of opening a shop, I couldn't burden him further with Michaela's issue. I just couldn't simply nod to Daniel's suggestion. As days passed without a decision, Daniel and I, with a short cake in hand, visited Kendrick's new home. Harmony! And Daniel, long time no see! Glad you could make it! Kendrick welcomed us right at the doorstep. Michaela was out shopping and wasn't there. I felt relieved not seeing her. Noticing this, Kendrick looked at me worriedly. What's wrong? You look pale. Is it the new house smell? No way. Just had a bit too much to drink with Danny last night. I forced a smile to reassure Kendrick. To avoid any awkward conversation, I asked to see around the new house. Kendrick shared that apart from the tidy living room, their personal items were still in boxes. We agreed not to go upstairs as per his request. Soon, our parents arrived, and we enjoyed a rare family gathering. Then, Daniel seized the opportunity to bring up yesterday's topic. Sorry to bring this up at a housewarming, but there's something about Michaela we need to discuss. Wait, Danny! I wasn't ready. Daniel's words made me panic. But he looked at me earnestly, holding my hand. Harmony, I've seen how hard you've worked, thinking about the family. Keeping your struggles to yourself seems unfair to Kendrick and the others. Struggles? Harmony, have you been having a hard time? Mom heard Daniel's words. Realizing I was hiding something, everyone looked worried. I regretted my foolish thought of just enduring it all. Actually, I've been harassed by Michaela for a long time. What? Everyone was shocked, especially Kendrick. It would be so. Understandably, knowing his wife was bullying his sister-in-law is shocking. Unable to speak, 
Daniel explained the situation for me. Silence followed. Only heavy air flowed there. I wondered if I should have kept quiet. That's when Kendrick, as if having made a decision, spoke to Mom. Mom, I've made up my mind. That's right. No need to hold back anymore. Huh? Daniel and I exchanged looks at the unexpected response. Dad explained the situation, leaving us speechless. Just as we were about to ask more. I'm back. It's so hot outside. Is Kendrick not here? Michaela returns home at the worst possible time. The family's spirits dampen as if sensing the charged air of her untimely arrival. I'm off then. With those words, Kendrick disappears towards the entrance, and Daniel suggests we store the cake he brought in the fridge for now. As Mom and I move to do so, we reach for the fridge door. Hey, don't you touch our stuff! Shouted at by Michaela, who just entered the living room, Mom and I jump in surprise. I'll take care of the house, just stay put, it's fine. Michaela, recalling Kendrick is around, snatches the cake from me with a creepily pleasant smile. Her words seem softened, but there's an underlying sharpness, especially as she roughly takes the cake. Mom, witnessing this, is speechless. Unable to react, she's shocked by such treatment in front of her. Feeling hurt, I urge Mom to join me on the living room sofa. Sitting next to Daniel, I try to hold back tears. Thank you all for coming to our housewarming today. If you have gifts, I'll gladly accept them. Michaela takes over as if she's the host. Her greedy words irritate both Daniel and me. Our parents, watching her closely, reluctantly present their gift to Michaela. I, not keen but following suit, hand over my gift, which Michaela snatches. What a boring gift. Typical. Michaela mutters, just loud enough for me to hear. Shocked at her audacity to complain despite receiving a gift, I feel my patience turning into anger. Then, Michaela takes out a bottle of disinfectant from a supermarket bag. Well then, let's wrap this up. She says, splashing the disinfectant on me. Drenched, I'm stunned, and my family cries out in alarm. So, I guess it's the height of the party. Just as I said that, Michaela turned towards me and splashed the disinfectant on me. I was drenched in disinfectant, completely soaked. Shocked by the sudden turn of events, I was speechless, and my family around me gasped. Hey, Michaela! What are you doing? Mom, more than anyone else, raised her voice and stood in front of Michaela to protect me, and everyone glared at Michaela. Michaela sneered at this and threw her final words at me. The smell of an older lady will dirty my new house. Get out! At that moment, something inside me snapped. Silent, I stood up with a frighteningly pleasant smile towards her. So you hate filth that much? Well, let me clean it up for you. After all, I built this place. Michaela, seeing me smile, seemed terrified and stepped back. I snatched all the presents from her, ignoring Michaela's complaints, and headed to the second floor. Conveniently, there was a plate with Michaela's name on it in front of the door, and I boldly walked inside. I picked up a cardboard box still packed and dropped it from the second floor to the first with a bang. Hey! What are you doing? Michaela tried to stop me as the boxes tumbled down one after another. But with so many boxes rolling down from the second floor, she couldn't come up and could only desperately scream in vain as I dropped the last box. Do you realize what you're doing? Michaela, showing her true colors in front of Kendrick, glared at me with a devilish face. Unconcerned about her, I went downstairs and asked Daniel with a smile. Can you hold back that noisy trash for me? We can't let the dirty germs out. The new house will get dirty with the smell of mold, right? Daniel must have been scared too. 
The words from my ever-smiling face were no longer treating Michaela as a human. And I was throwing all her belongings outside with apparent delight. People might think I've lost my mind. It can't be helped that you think so. Stop it, Kendrick. What are you just staring at? Stop her. Isn't your sister out of her mind? Michaela was screaming desperately. However, Kendrick did not respond. Instead, he silently watched my next move. The entrance was overflowing with Michaela's cardboard boxes, a mess, but it couldn't be helped. After throwing everything outside, I clapped my hands and walked towards Michaela for the final touch. Well, now it's just Michaela left. What do you mean? You think you can get away with this? Who knows? I can't hear the threats of trash. My smile must have been like a mask, mechanical and eerie. Michaela gasped at my creepy smile, looking at me fearfully. Without paying her any attention, I instructed Daniel to kick her out along with her slippers. Hey, stop! No! Kendrick, help me! Michaela begged Kendrick for help until she was thrown out. But Kendrick had no intention of listening to her. At this point, I understood what Kendrick and the others meant. There's not a single person on your side here. Get out if you understand. This is my house, after all. What? What are you talking? Before Michaela could finish, Daniel dragged her out, pushing her outside the entrance. Daniel, who managed to kick Michaela out, immediately closed the door and, very thoroughly, double-locked and even chained it. Michaela, now completely unable to enter, was left outside in the summer heat. She banged on the door and screamed for about 10 minutes, but her strength seemed to wane gradually. To make matters worse, neighbors came by and started whispering about her shabby appearance. Mommy, look! That lady is outside in her slippers! Hey, don't do that. Don't point. Even passing children mocked Michaela. For her, so full of pride, this public humiliation was hell. She crammed all her belongings into her car and fled the scene that day. Seeing this, I regained my composure and hastily turned to Kendrick. What should we do? Kendrick, I'm sorry. That was... It's okay, I know the situation. Besides, we should be the ones apologizing. Kendrick suggested going back to the living room, and Mom had prepared tea and cake. I borrowed clothes from Kendrick and quickly changed to avoid catching a cold. After changing, I sat on the living room sofa, and Kendrick explained why he had been silent all this time. That woman, she was actually harassing mom in the same way. What? Shocked by this sudden revelation, Daniel and I looked at mom in surprise. It all happened when I wasn't around. Mom told me yesterday. She was constantly harassed and mocked by her, even made fun of you. It was really terrible. Michaela had been badmouthing me every time we met suggesting that my poor upbringing was due to mom's bad parenting, and if the parents had more money, Kendrick wouldn't have had to struggle. That's what mom confessed to Kendrick yesterday. Then he said that since you built the house, we should explain the situation to you and your family before deciding what to do next. And that's what led to today. Michaela, who even tormented mom, could never be forgiven. Trembling with anger, I clenched my fist so tightly that my nails dug into my palms. Seeing this, Daniel gently placed his hand over mine. Harmony, I know how much you care about family. Maybe you don't have to endure this anymore? Danny. After hearing all this, I definitely can't go on with her either. Resolved by Kendrick's determination, I also steeled myself to teach that woman a lesson. We pledged to act and did so immediately. The next day. My phone was flooded with a storm of calls from Michaela. Kendrick, 
Daniel, and I decided to meet her alone. What do you mean by this? Kicking me out of the house. You won't get away with what you did. We agreed to meet at my office, and as soon as she entered, her shrill voice echoed. Wearing the same clothes as yesterday, with dark circles under her eyes from lack of sleep, Michaela arrived looking miserable. Her loud voice was irritating, but I didn't let it show. Instead, I smiled sweetly, further infuriating her with my words. I cleaned up because you said the new house gets dirty, right? What? I don't want someone as ugly as you in the house. The new house will get dirty with germs, right? Saying so, I put my index finger to my lips, feigning cuteness. As unsuitable as it felt for me, it seemed to affect Michaela. Her face turned red as a boiled lobster, showing her anger. Who's ugly? I'm far more beautiful than a third-rate woman like you. To say that with the same clothes as yesterday and such a dirty face, impressive. Whose fault do you think it is that I ended up like this? A woman like you acting all high and mighty. Doubling down on my previous provocations, I taunted Michaela, which angered her enough to come at me. Daniel stood protectively in front of me, and Kendrick, usually mild-mannered, showed his anger for the first time. Enough! You're in no position to talk down to Harmony and her family. What? Why should I be the one getting scolded? The bad one is clearly that woman. Michaela remained defiant, even against Kendrick's words. She must have looked down on Kendrick as well, deep down. She was after money. Thinking Kendrick had money and blaming me for losing it, she must have despised me. Despite having her own earnings, her greed showed what a despicable woman she was. As I glared at her with utter contempt, Kendrick slammed a piece of paper in front of her. I have no intention of going on with someone who can't even value my family. We're getting a divorce. The paper Kendrick presented was a divorce petition, already signed by him and his father as a guarantor. Seeing this, Michaela suddenly regained her composure and clung to Kendrick in panic. Wait! A divorce, just wait! I don't want to hear what you have to say. My mind is made up, and if you refuse the divorce, I'll go to court if I have to. Where do you think the money for that will come from? You don't have the financial power, so don't talk big. I'll support financially, so don't worry. Michaela initially tried to act humble, but Kendrick's words revealed her true nature again. Now that we had proof of her looking down on Kendrick financially, we could crush her without remorse. Smiling, I intervened between them. I noticed that Michaela seems to be trying to explain what she's talking about, so I say something more. Didn't you know? Besides this store, I have several others. I have enough financial power to fight you. Michaela gasped in surprise at my words. Previously, a TV show had featured one of my regular customers praising my shop. The reporter raved about its beauty and deliciousness, leading to its popularity. Requests for more stores came flooding in, and now I have a nationwide chain. Kendrick was the only one who supported the opening of my shop. As a thank you, I gifted him that house. I had also heard about you planning to open a clinic nearby and thought you'd need money. Michaela's face turned pale upon hearing the whole situation. She must have realized she had picked a fight with the wrong person. She was speechless. Since I still hold the property rights, I am the owner of that house. I can sue you for trespassing. What will you do? Will you fight? With a smile, I cornered Michaela, who seemingly gave in and began to profusely apologize. Even though Michaela continued to apologize, our family had no intention of forgiving her, and we kicked her out of the store. Kendrick and Michaela eventually went to court for a divorce. Given everything that had happened, our lawyer assured us the divorce would be granted. Our family savored this joy. During the time she was kicked out, 
Michaela's face became well known in the neighborhood, and no one was sympathetic towards her. Her clinic had no patients and closed within three months. She shamefully fled to the city. Thus, our family found peace. I continued managing my shops, and Kendrick finally opened his own. Kendrick, Dad, and Mom started living in the new house, which we remodeled for accessibility. Harmony, what happened? You suddenly went quiet. I was reminiscing during a tea party with everyone. Snapped back to reality by a neighbor, I responded. Sorry, it's nothing. I'm just really grateful to those kids. Thanks to them, I'm now enjoying a peaceful retirement with my husband. As we enjoyed the cake, I reflected on how these nearly 40 years were the stepping stones to my current happiness. Water's good enough for poor folks. Alana, my daughter's future mother-in-law, said, laughing coarsely. I couldn't hide my discomfort at her vulgarity. Oh, could it be? Right after that, my daughter's sister-in-law-to-be, Rena, looked at me, her face turning pale. I just smiled slightly. I'm Sonia Rollins. Turning 54 this year. I divorced my ex-husband when our daughter, Krista, was three. The reason for our divorce was irreconcilable differences. He wouldn't work and spent his days drinking. No matter what I said, he never changed. Naturally, our financial situation worsened. I didn't need a family like that, so I decided to divorce him. We divorced without any child support or alimony. Since then, it's been just Krista and me. I was a housewife until the divorce. When I had to raise Krista alone, I started working desperately. I couldn't leave young Krista alone at home, so I initially took on work-from-home jobs to make ends meet. Of course, life was tough. Working from morning till night, the pay was low, leading to constant saving. There were times, a day before payday, when I ran out of money and went without food. Despite the hardships, I managed to raise Krista into adulthood. With Krista becoming a working adult, I found myself with more free time and started dedicating more time to work. Leveraging my experience in simple tasks, I began creating handmade items. This eventually turned into a successful business. There's also been a change in my personal life. Krista got engaged. Not long after Krista started working at her company, she began dating a man named Nicholas. Nicholas is Krista's boss at work and is five years her senior. I've seen a photo of Nicholas that Krista showed me, he seemed like a fine young man. It appears Krista has learned from her father's bad example, as Nicholas gives off a serious impression. I'm delighted with the happiness Krista has found. Now, in the latter half of my life, I've decided to live as I please. That was my thought. Then, one day, Mom, I need to talk to you about something. Krista approached me after dinner. It was unusual for Krista to come to me hesitantly like this. While thinking this, I responded to Krista. What's the rush? You seem off, what's going on? Then Krista said to me, modestly, I'm going to marry Nicholas. Really? That's wonderful. Congratulations. Since I haven't actually met Nicholas, I don't know what kind of person he is. I hoped he would be just like the person in the photo. I'm glad you feel that way, Mom. I was worried you might oppose it. Krista seemed relieved that I didn't oppose her decision. Her face clearly showed relief. Then Krista made a suggestion. So, I was hoping you could meet Nicholas this weekend. It seems Krista wanted me to meet Nicholas before they got married. Considering how serious Krista is, she probably wanted to show me Nicholas's face to put me at ease. I nodded strongly towards Krista. All right. I'll meet Nicholas. I want to see what kind of person he is. Mom. 
Krista said, looking happy. And so, it was decided that Nicholas and I would meet. Sunday of the following weekend. I was waiting at home for Krista and him. It was just before 11 a.m. It wouldn't be long until Krista brought Nicholas over. Then, at that moment, the doorbell rang. Yes. When I opened the door, there stood Krista and Nicholas. Nice to meet you. I'm Nicholas Friedman, engaged to Krista. Nicholas said, greeting me. I felt a bit relieved by Nicholas's politeness. Krista is my precious only daughter. I'm glad her partner is a decent person. Please come in. I said, inviting Krista and Nicholas into the house. Nicholas still seemed like a fine young man after entering our home. He brought famous brand sweets as a gift. And he shared the story of how he and Krista met with a smile. Nicholas, stop it. You're embarrassing me. Krista said, blushing, addressing Nicholas. Seeing Krista like this felt fresh to me. However, the warm atmosphere changed in the next moment. By the way, is your father at work today? Nicholas asked, looking around curiously. His expression was somewhat puzzled. I was taken aback by Nicholas's question. Glancing at Krista, she looked a bit pale. She probably hadn't told Nicholas about being raised by a single mother. Honestly, it was wrong of Krista to keep it a secret. In traditional households, single mothers often face prejudice. I braced myself to explain the situation to Nicholas. Krista might not have mentioned it, but... I'm divorced and a single mother. Nicholas's face, previously smiling, went blank for a moment. What's wrong? I asked Nicholas, feeling anxious. Maybe it wasn't good for me to have told him. That's what I thought. But in the next moment, Nicholas was already smiling. It's nothing, please don't worry. He said, still smiling. Is that so? I said, tilting my head, puzzled. Despite being confused by Nicholas's change of expression, I didn't press further. After that, the marriage talks proceeded smoothly. Krista seemed to enjoy planning the wedding, asking, What kind of dress should I choose? What color do you think is good for me, Mom? with excitement. Well, maybe a color you like? I responded, but couldn't quite feel at ease. I couldn't forget Nicholas's expression from that moment. Nicholas's expression went blank. Perhaps his family has strict views on single parenthood. So, I asked Krista, what did Nicholas say on the way back that day? About us being a single mother household? Maybe Nicholas is facing opposition to marrying Krista from his parents. I asked, but Krista answered with a puzzled look. He didn't say anything special? Mom, aren't you worrying too much? Since Krista said that, I couldn't ask any more. However, my bad feeling proved right. It happened one night. Mom. As soon as Krista returned, she called out my name. Her expression was quite dark, and I asked her in surprise. Krista, why such a gloomy face? Did something happen? Even though I asked, Krista remained silent. It was unusual for the optimistic Krista to look so troubled. After a while, Krista hesitantly began to speak. Actually, it seems Nicholas's family isn't too pleased about our marriage. Krista said, looking sad. Why? Because we're a single mother family. They think Nicholas will struggle because we're poor and from a single parent home. That's an awful thing to say. It would be very hard to hear such things from the in-laws. I asked Krista seriously. Did Nicholas's mother say that? Krista nodded silently. I was outraged by the turn of events. Just because we're a single mother family doesn't mean they should assume we're poor. We've had our struggles, but now we live a normal life. I work as hard as any man. 
And then Krista told me something unbelievable. Nicholas's sister also said some things. Like what? I asked Krista. She said we're just after Nicholas's money. That it's impossible for them to accept us as family. Krista answered, looking disheartened. Her face looked incredibly lonely. Krista must have been deeply hurt by these direct comments. It's terrible that they would say such things about me without even meeting me. I can't believe Nicholas's parents. What did Nicholas say at that time? I asked Krista. And I remembered Nicholas's expression when he came to our house the other day. Maybe his expressionless face was because he imagined his family's reaction. It seems his family has quite a prejudice against single mothers. I started to worry about the future. Then Krista said, Nicholas defended me. After all, I work at the same company as Nicholas, so there's no way I'd ask for money. I felt relieved. If Nicholas is on your side, that's reassuring. I found myself saying that without thinking. If Nicholas had sided with his family instead of defending Krista, I would have been worried about her future. She would probably continue to face unpleasant remarks from his family. But if Nicholas is on her side, it felt somewhat better. A few days later, Krista suggested having a family meeting with Nicholas's family before the wedding. Mom, I want to have a family meeting with Nicholas's family before the wedding. I'm really sorry. According to Krista, it was Alana's suggestion. You should greet your fiancé's parents at least once. Your mother has that much common sense, right? She was told. Nicholas and I couldn't exactly refuse. I'm really sorry. Krista said, apologizing and being considerate of me. For Krista's marriage introduction, we are meeting with his family. Honestly, I have no idea what they might say. I don't really want to go, but it seems right to follow through with the courtesy. It's okay. I responded with my agreement. Then, the day of the marriage introduction arrived. Krista and I went to a restaurant near his parents' house. The reason for a restaurant, as Krista told me, was because Alana had said, We can't have you in our house when you're not married yet. There's a fine dining restaurant nearby, that will do, won't it? The restaurant Alana chose charges $300 per person for a course meal. I go there occasionally for business, but hardly ever privately. I was puzzled by Alana's choice of restaurant. It seems Alana had also chosen a cafe near their house for Krista's first greeting to the family. Moreover, Krista ended up paying for Alana's meal as well. According to Alana, it's only natural since you're becoming my son's wife. Apparently, Nicholas reimbursed the meal cost later. Why does Alana act so arrogantly, even though she's the one inviting us for the marriage greeting? I couldn't help but feel uncomfortable. But if I, as Krista's mother, refuse now, Krista will surely be criticized for being rude. After getting married, Krista might end up feeling uncomfortable. So, reluctantly, I accepted the proposal. Then, I put on light makeup and headed to the designated place. I usually wear full makeup for work, but I thought it best to keep it understated today. My outfit was also much more modest than usual. A flashy outfit might give them the impression that I'm extravagant. Given that we're already being accused of being after Nicholas's money, a modest outfit seemed wise. With these thoughts, Krista and I entered the upscale restaurant and were led by the staff to a private room. Upon opening the door, Nicholas and his family were there. Krista, Sonia, thank you for coming today. Nicholas greeted us politely. Thank you as well for today. I also expressed my gratitude to Nicholas. Then I faced father-in-law Kevin, mother-in-law Lana, and sister-in-law Raina. His parents and Raina smirked unpleasantly and looked down on Krista and me. 
It was clear at a glance that we were not welcomed by his family. I greeted them with heightened wariness. Thank you for giving us your precious time today. I'm Sonia, Krista's mother. It's a pleasure to meet you. Then Alana said with a nasty smile. I'd rather not have any further association, you know. Mom! Nicholas admonished Alana, but she didn't seem to care. Just being from a single parent family is problematic enough. You must be struggling with money. Even your clothes are so plain. Alana scrutinized my outfit from top to bottom and said. Then she laughed mockingly. My attempt to dress modestly had backfired. Reyna also hurled insults while laughing. You could have married someone decent. Poor Nicholas, stuck with a poor mother and daughter. I was irritated by Reyna's comment. Such remarks were too rude for a first meeting. But I couldn't disrupt Krista's marriage. Excuse me. I reluctantly took my seat. Perhaps because I didn't retort. The in-laws looked at me as if they found me amusing. Krista looked at me with concern. Nicholas seemed a bit angry at his family's lack of manners. His brows were furrowed. Unaware of his demeanor, Alana was in high spirits. Today, we reserved a course meal. It's $300. Alana excitedly told Reyna. Really? I'm looking forward to it because the courses here are so expensive. We have to eat a lot. Reyna was giddy with excitement. Kevin nodded happily as well. After a while, the staff brought the dishes. It was a colorful array of amuse-bouche. At this restaurant, three types of amuse-bouche are served on one plate. They all looked very delicious. But in front of me, there was only water. Eh. I was about to call the staff back, but they had already left the room. Only the water was left in front of me, a stark reminder. Nicholas looked at the scene, dumbfounded. Reyna, knowing what was happening, laughed mockingly. Krista noticed it too and said with concern, Mom. Then, in the next moment, Alana laughed nastily. Poor people are fine with just water. Alana said, laughing crudely. I showed my discomfort at her vulgarity. What does this mean? I asked Alana. The in-laws had called us to this restaurant. Yet, they had no intention of hosting us properly. I was quite irritated inside. Alana glanced at me, then laughed as if she was pleased. Even though I was angry, she didn't seem to care. She seemed to enjoy it, actually. Oh? Not only are you a poor single mother, but are you also stupid? Did you really think someone worthless like you would be welcomed? Alana hurled insults at me. Kevin nodded as if it was to be expected. Don't you feel ashamed to be a single parent? A woman who was left by her husband, you're full of flaws. A plain woman like you becomes unnecessary, right? Kevin said, laughing crudely. It wasn't that my ex-husband left me, but Kevin's assumption was unilateral. I truly thought this was unbelievable as a human being. Reyna also laughed joyfully. I don't want to end up like Krista's mother. Working for low wages even though she's a woman. It's really pitiful without any feminine charm. While saying this, she looked down on me. Mom. I'm sorry. Krista looked like she was about to cry. She must feel responsible for putting me in this difficult situation. Krista was looking down. I had reached my limit of patience. Being looked down upon like this, I couldn't stay quiet any longer. It might be time to fight back. At that moment, Enough already! All of you ganging up on Krista's mother. Aren't you ashamed as adults? Nicholas yelled loudly. I was surprised that Nicholas stood up for me. Nicholas. Krista also looked surprised. Nicholas was red-faced and angry at his family. 
However, Alana and the others showed no remorse. Alana, still laughing joyfully, said, There's no need to defend poor people. Why is Nicholas getting so angry? Kevin nodded significantly. Nicholas's words seemed to have no effect on them. I could only be dumbfounded by his parents. They must lack common sense. It might be time for a counterattack. I had a last resort that would surprise the in-laws. At that moment, Rena started to look at my face. I ended up glaring at Rena. Then Rena muttered, Oh, could it be? Right after that, Rena looked at me and her face turned pale. It seems she finally realized who I really am. I let out a slight smile. Rena, looking at me, was trembling. No way. Noticing her reaction, Kevin asked Rena with a puzzled look. What's wrong with you? You've been acting strange for a while. Alana also looked at Rena, surprised. You're as pale as a ghost. Are you feeling okay? Alana spoke to Rena with concern. Still, Rena's trembling didn't stop. Given the truth, Rena realized it's understandable. Then Rena asked Kevin, Dad, your company is Globecrafts, right? Reyna looked at Kevin, seeking confirmation. Globecrafts is a small to medium-sized enterprise with about 100 employees. The salaries aren't comparable to those of major companies. And I am familiar with Globecrafts. The reason I know it is because it's related to my work. Kevin said with a laugh, What's this all of a sudden? I might look like this, but I'm working hard as the sales manager. And, Kevin continued, I used my connections to hire you as a part-time worker in our company, didn't I? Be grateful, Kevin said, laughing. That's right. Reyna's face fell, looking resigned. Kevin asked Reyna, puzzled, But why are you asking this? Are you trying to show off because this poor person is likely employed on a non-regular basis and you work as a regular employee? Kevin looked down on me with a disdainful gaze. This man is about to face a dire situation. I vowed in my heart. Then Reyna sighed lightly and began to speak. Dad, don't you know the company's clients? The company's clients? Kevin asked, puzzled. Alana looked stunned. Being a housewife, she didn't seem to understand much. Reyna hesitantly explained. I've met Krista's mother before. Inside the company. She was wearing more makeup then, and I didn't recognize her right away. Kevin seemed confused. What do you mean inside the company? I'm sure I remember the faces of the employees, including part-timers, but there's no older woman like that? I frowned at being called an older woman. But it seems Kevin was too preoccupied to notice. Trying desperately to remember as he heard inside the company. However, I haven't spoken directly to Kevin, so it's understandable if he doesn't remember. As I thought this, Reyna began to apologize. Krista's mother! I'm really sorry for what happened. Seeing Reyna's behavior, the in-laws began to get agitated. Why apologize? There's no need to say sorry to such a poor person. Alana said. That's right. Don't you have any pride? Apologizing to a poor person like this. Kevin shouted at Reyna. Reyna glared sharply at her parents. Dad, Mom. Krista's mother is actually very wealthy. Much more than dad could ever be. What did you say? Kevin glared at Reyna. Being told such a thing by his own daughter must have been unexpected. Alana, too, reacted to Reyna's statement with, How could you say that? Screaming almost hysterically. Reyna said with a resigned attitude, because Krista's mother is the president. 
I've served her tea in the company's reception room. You know Roland's bags, right? Kevin froze upon hearing that name. Then he turned his neck to look at me. I deliberately smiled. Kevin's face turned pale. Roland's bags. Isn't that the brand the president finally convinced for a collaboration that's supposed to happen? Then Alana screamed. Roland's bags, that's the one with bags in department stores, right? Even my bag is from there. Alana said, looking over her bag multiple times. When we entered this restaurant's private room, I noticed a familiar bag. Alana was holding it carefully under her chair. It's a breach of manners in a high-end restaurant, but it must be her favorite bag. I told Alana with a smile. That's a magazine giveaway, isn't it? I'm honored that you're using my brand. Alana's face turned red. Then she looked down, embarrassed. She must feel ashamed that her bag was recognized as a magazine giveaway. I took out my business card from my card holder. I am Sonia Rollins, the representative of Rollins Bags. The in-laws scrutinized the business card carefully. To think you were actually the president. Kevin was trembling as he looked at the business card. Alana looked incredulous. I watched the two staring silently at the business card and said, We were supposed to collaborate with Globecrafts, but it seems like that collaboration won't be possible anymore. Such a shame. Hearing this, Kevin looked disturbed. Why? That collaboration is the most important project the president has been working on. If we cancel it, our company will. Kevin said, trembling with fear. What's going on? Alana asked Kevin, confused. The truth is, Globecrafts is in a precarious financial situation. Compared to the past, fewer people are making handmade items. When I was young, my mother used to sew everything by hand. But now, cheap ready-made products are abundant, probably a sign of the times. Globecrafts has been hit hard by this trend, with sales declining year by year. When Globecrafts president proposed the collaboration, he mentioned it was a strategy to turn around the company's dire situation. However, I have collaborated with many famous brands. So, honestly, I wasn't very interested in collaborating with a small to medium-sized enterprise like Globecrafts. Initially, I declined the president's proposal, but eventually, I was persuaded by his enthusiasm and agreed. We decided to collaborate with Globecrafts to make bags. But now, that's a thing of the past. Kevin was trembling. He must be terrified of what's to come. Ignoring Kevin, I quietly said, The collaboration with Globecrafts didn't seem to offer much benefit. I was just moved by the president's enthusiasm. But a company that looks down on Krista. I stared at Kevin with a cold gaze. Kevin was sweating under my stare. Then, in the next moment, he apologized to me. What? While Alana was confused by Kevin's apology, he desperately sought my forgiveness. Krista and Nicholas were also surprised by Kevin's apology. I'm truly sorry. Kevin is apologizing, clearly not caring about how it looks. To me, Kevin's apology doesn't resonate at all. After all, an apology that comes only after he realizes my position is just to protect himself. There's no genuine remorse there. I spoke with a chillingly cold voice. An apology now? After you've looked down on Krista and me all this time. To think that an apology would suffice after all this. Kevin's mindset must be overly optimistic. Then, realizing that his apology wouldn't turn the situation around, Kevin quickly stood up. It was merely a performance after all. Alana, looking bewildered at me, said, We're going to be family, so you'll forgive us, right? She said that flippantly, looking at me. Then Alana continued, I'm a big fan of Roland's bags. 
since we're family, I'll get some products for free, right? Alana looked at me with hopeful eyes. I was so appalled that I couldn't say anything. Mom, that's too convenient. Nicholas said, frowning and sternly admonishing her. Even for Alana, that comment was too far beyond the pale. But Alana, seemingly not understanding, said, Why not? There must be plenty of stock, right? It wouldn't hurt to give away a few. Getting into a worse mood. Kevin and Reyna looked at Alana with dismay. I told Alana. Our products are not free to give away. After all, you are strangers to us. Alana looked frustrated at my words. Krista and our Nicholas are getting married, right? So we are family. A family should provide financial support. You're the president after all. Alana said this with a straight face. After all the disdainful poor calling, this was her attitude. She clearly had no remorse. Nicholas finally lost his patience with Alana's attitude. Mom, you change your attitude just because you found out Krista's mom is the president? Aren't you ashamed? Nicholas, his face red, reproached Alana. But Alana, unfazed, laughed it off. It doesn't matter. A president must have more money than they know what to do with, right? Share a little with us. I quietly told Alana. Even if Krista and Nicholas get married, I have no intention of forming any ties with you. Alana, surprised, tried to cozy up to me. Don't say that. Once Nicholas gets married, we'll be family anyway, so giving away a bag or two. Alana was infuriating. As I was about to retort, Nicholas stepped between Alana and me. Nicholas. When I asked, Nicholas looked troubled. I knew Sonia was the president. And I kept silent, knowing my parents would bother Sonia if they found out. Kevin looked regretful at Nicholas's confession. You knew? If you had told me, I would have. If you had known, you'd act just like mom, right? Nicholas looked at Kevin with a cold gaze. How dare you speak to your parents like that? Keep this up, and you're disowned. Kevin shouted at Nicholas. Krista was puzzled by their exchange. Nicholas sighed and declared. I'm fine with being disowned. I'll sever ties with you all. Why would you say such a thing? After all we've done to raise you. Alana, shaken, spoke to Nicholas. Kevin and Reyna, stunned, stared at Nicholas. They hadn't expected him to say he'd cut ties. I want to cherish Krista going forward. I don't need a family that disregards Krista and Sonia. Nicholas. Alana collapsed in tears. Kevin and Reyna stood there, dumbfounded. Being disowned by their beloved son must be incredibly hard. But that's solely the responsibility of Alana and the rest of the in-laws. Live with your regrets. I'm sure you'll struggle in the future. I said, smiling lightly. Then Krista joined in with my statement. We won't even tell you if we have children. She said this directly to her in-laws. Not being able to see the grandchild. Please, spare us that. Alana cried out in agony. Amidst this, Nicholas murmured. We're done being a family. At his words, Kevin and Reyna tried to cling to us with faces about to cry. Ignoring such in-laws, Krista, Nicholas, and I left the restaurant. Afterward, I heard Kevin and Reyna were fired from the company. The day after the incident at the restaurant, I told the president of Globecrafts that I wanted to cancel the collaboration. The president tried to persuade me several times, but I refused. I cannot collaborate with a company that harbors individuals capable of such disdain. While I sympathized with the president's desire to save his company, I couldn't support a company that employed Kevin and his ilk. 
I explained the situation to the president. Then the president became furious. Apparently, the president has a daughter about Krista's age and couldn't forgive Kevin and Reyna's actions. The collaboration with me was crucial for Globecrafts. Kevin and Reyna had ruined such an important collaboration. It's understandable that the president couldn't forgive them. Kevin was already of age, and Reyna was employed part-time through Kevin's connections. After being fired from Globecrafts, finding a new job would be very tough for them. And Alana was a housewife. She had already been cut off by Nicholas, their only breadwinner. Once, the in-laws came directly to our company to negotiate. Please collaborate with Globecrafts. If you do, the president will rehire me. Even if not a collaboration, provide financial support. Our family is suffering, you know? Families help each other out. They both pleaded desperately. After treating people like poor people and now suddenly claiming family, it's laughable. I made it clear. Neither collaboration nor financial support is possible. Nicholas has also severed ties with you, hasn't he? Please leave now. But the in-laws wouldn't leave. But... Trying somehow to cling to me. I firmly told the in-laws again. Never appear in front of me again. If I see you again, I'll call the police. Perhaps because I mentioned the police, Kevin said. Please, not the police. We won't come again. And left with Alana. The in-laws' clothes were dirty, they probably weren't living well. They who had once scorned others as poor. It's purely their own fault. Apparently, Reyna has since lived almost entirely shut in. Struggling to find a job and unlikely to marry. Despairing about the future, Reyna barely leaves her room. Her future seems to hold nothing but despair. Three years have passed since then. Now, Krista, Nicholas, and I live together. Ideally, as newlyweds, Krista and Nicholas should live alone. But Nicholas said, I think it's safer for Krista if she's with you in case of anything. And they decided to live with me. Nicholas, busy with work, often helps with household chores alongside Krista. I'm truly grateful. And a significant change has occurred for the three of us. One day, Krista approached me with a serious look. Mom. Worried something might have happened to Krista, I became anxious. Then, in the next moment, she smiled. It looks like I'm going to be a mom. Krista joyfully stroked her belly. That's wonderful, Krista. Congratulations. Delighted, I hugged Krista. Nicholas smiled happily beside Krista and me. I'm sure various things will happen from now on. But if it's us, we can surely overcome them. I'm also looking forward to meeting the new grandchild. Imagining our happy future, a natural smile spread across my face.